This episode is brought to you by MedBridge Education. Log into medbridgeeducation.com slash TN Therapy Outsource. Use the promo code Dr. Mike or alternative to get $200 discount or over 40% off. Gain access to 1,000 plus online courses, compliance training, certification preps, program, and so much more. So again, thank you very much. Enjoy the show. What's going on, Dementia Warriors? This is Dr. Mike Chu again, physical therapist and your dementia coach. And today, again, today is uh, Thursday Dementia Training. First of all, I would like to promote our urgent medical notice card. If you can see that, urgent medical notice card. Uh, if you're part of the ALZ Prime Training and Education, we're going to send this out to you for free. That includes also the... Alzheimer's caregiver pin. It's very affordable. You know, our monthly uh, subscription is four dollars and ninety nine cents. It's very affordable. Uh, <clears throat> every uh, the first month is free. Come join us. It's called the ALZ Prime Training and Education. Yes, we have the Alzheimer's disease. We have the Alzheimer's and dementia support group that is free. But inside the ALZ Prime, you will get all this. Uh, Tra uh, dementia training and education. All right. Uh, again, uh, today we're going to be talking about our, in our Thursday dementia training. We're going to be talking about uh, hoarding. So we're, we are going to go ahead and start talk about hoarding. So basically hoarding is a compulsive uh, behavior, uh, also known as obviously uh, hoarding. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, who hasn't seen the, the show Hoarders? So basically uh, it's a behavioral pattern characterized by excessive acquisition of different stuff, you know, whether it's uh, uh, items that are safe or not. And basically uh, I would say hoarding is it's not just hoarding physical items and also hoarding uh, emotional stuff. So again, this is uh, an actual disease. It's called an obsessive compulsive and related disorders. It is classified under uh, the diagnosis uh, ICD codes. So uh, moving along, like what I said, basically when you're hoarding physical items, basically you're also hoarding emotional stuff inside your body. So you got to make sure to really identify, identify this. All right. So again, this are the risk uh, associated with hoarding. You know, when a patient hoards a lot of stuff in their house, uh, it could develop mold, it could develop dust and it could develop dirt and it results into respiratory issues, COPD and other bacterial pneumonia or whatever. It could also cause, you know, insect and rodent manifest, uh, infestation, manifestation, infestation. It's just going to accumulate, you know, because it's just dirty. And I had this one patient, you know, uh, uh, she kept on eating spoiled and rotten foods because they just hoard stuff. And obviously you also have, you know, risk for falling, uh, because all this clutters are all over their house and fire issues you know excessive paper you know uh oh i'm actually a hoarder i got excessive paper here let me show you now got some excessive paper and uh i just uh i just like collecting all the papers well speaking of that uh before we go on to the ne next slide i just happened to see uh, Ryan Williams book, you know, Ryan Williams book. It's titled why grandma keeps forgetting an Alzheimer's story. So uh, it's just a shameless plug, but, uh, uh, we, we will not have this awesome Alzheimer's and dementia support group without our awesome administrator, Ryan. So if you are, this book is actually, actually it was free for some time. He was giving out for free for different, uh, uh association but you can actually buy it uh i guess on his website or or uh online at amazon all right let me go ahead and move on to the next slide there you go so what are the causes of hoarding you know first of all they think it is valuable you know when when a patient is keeping stuff they think it is valuable and they think that it is uh they can still use it in the future just like this old pen I got all fancy pens here, the fancy gel pens, but I still keep on, you know, wanting to keep this regular cheap one cent pen, I guess. So yeah, 
and then of course it's also a sense of security for patients you know they think that uh, they have this uh, some sort of uh, valuable thing and it's because they are just anxious they just want to keep collecting stuff and again OCD you know they're just um, uh, have this obsessive compulsive disorder another cause is obviously is depression they just depress and they just uh, get comfort uh, when they are collecting and keeping stuff and again there's also a need to collect things and uh, some people some patients who would like to hoard they obtain love from objects and i remember this my mother that's just not a hoarder she's a very organized lady her our house is just you know pristine clean and everything and uh but she liked to collect stuff you know she likes to collect uh, those uh uh, what do you call this? Those, uh, frogs. Because it's, apparently it's a good, uh, uh, Chinese, uh, luck. You know, I had one patient there. Her house is just really nice and clean, but she collected, you know, um, uh, little angels. So some people, they collect stuff there. And again, obviously not last but not least, the fear of getting robbed or losing items. Okay. And again, of course, you know, they have physical and functional limitation. I got some patients, you know, they just can't get up and clean their house and inability to organize. Obviously, you, when you have dementia and Alzheimer's, they have a hard time processing information and they just can't organize. I mean, imagine they can even, they can even, they don't even know how to properly put their toothpaste and brush their teeth and stuff like that. They get confused already. What more for organizing and cleaning their house? That's why when you have that, we refer uh, patients to social workers so they could find somebody to help them out how to do this. And of course, stress, you know, uh, when they have high stress, you know, high, uh, problems at the house, you know, they have a hard time, uh, processing and, and, uh, again, uh, cleaning their house and loneliness. You know, when I was uh, by myself here in the States, we, uh, my family, uh, had we had to wait for a year for them to come in here. And I just, I was just by myself and I was just lonely. And, you know, I'm not saying this in a nice way, but I, I didn't even bother cleaning my apartment. And until they came in, I started cleaning my apartment and, 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 uh, starting to, you know, be active again in, in, in cleaning the house. Just imagine, I don't even have dementia, right? And items that appear comfort such as pictures and other memories associated to the object. So obviously those picture frames, it may not be valuable to us caregiver but if the patient sees it as an object that is related to you know some sort of a memory they're gonna keep on hoarding and, and keeping keep those stuff and uh yeah all right next would be where to find those lost items obviously you know we've had all these patients who like to keep and hide all their stuff you know uh obviously we're, we're gonna find them under here under the pillow <laughs> they keep and everything under the pillow, under the cushion or couch, you know, they drop stuff, you know, I don't know how many things you can find under your couch right now. Uh, obviously body, you know, body orifice, you know, we've got some patients. I remember this, my grandmother and even my, my wife's grandmother, they kept money in their bra. I don't know if you had some patients who had that. So if you've had patients who had that, they keep money on their bra, especially I'm not, I'm not sure if it's here in America, but, uh, I had patients, uh, uh, or my grandparents did that and hid money there in their bra and drains, obviously, you know, uh, in the sink, you know, you can also see stuff in the toilet. <laughs> they think it's, it's, uh, things, uh, that they throw in the toilet and purses. I had this lady. She was, uh, in the nursing home. I remember this. She had everything in her purse, you know, food, coins, you name it. It's every, everything is there. It was like a 20 pound purse that uh, she carries all the time in, <laughs> inside, uh, in the nursing home. And, uh, she just had everything, you know, and she would offer me, um, candies inside that purse. I'm like, okay, I'll just get it. And it's just, you know, you know, it's an old candy. So again, you can also find items in the trash can. They would throw stuff there. Like, uh, make sure you always check the trash can because sometimes there are we have patients that will throw stuff in the trash can like their dentures and everything like that and even hearing aids you know those are pretty expensive you got to check that too 
and drawers and obviously oven ovens ovens you gotta check that too because they they you know especially uh women they like checking the oven all the time because they think they're cooking something and then all of a sudden they put stuff there and they forget that uh, they put it there all right and then what do we do what to what to do with our patient you know first of all if it doesn't bother you you know just leave them alone you know if it's if it, there's no safety risk you know that's okay but most of the time there is always uh, a safety risk so you got to check it always use soft and gentle approach just remember the these are patients these are our dementia patients and loved ones and hoarding uh, you know like what i said is an actual diagnosis it's not just a thing that they want to collect or something it is actually a diagnosis and it is a disease that is uh uh affecting their brain and then obviously treat with respect and understanding when we see a patient who have cancer or have a heart disease or a kidney disease when we talk to them we treat them with respect and understanding but if we see hoarding people who are hoarding, we're like so judge, judgmental on it. So you, we got, we still have to treat the uh, hoarders and, you know, people who have, you know, uh, unorganized houses. So we still have to respect them. And then again, refer to appropriate practitioner, whether it's an occupational therapist because they're having difficulty in cleaning or ADLs or, uh, a social worker where they can find somebody to help them clean and stuff like that and uh, you know church groups or whatever refer to appropriate practitioner all right and then next again uh do make a gradual change in bargaining with the with the patient you know gradual changes he, he doesn't have to be a, the whole room or the whole house to to clean or to organize you can start with the simple uh, fixing the drawer or organizing whatever where she's sitting at or on the couch in that way you know you get small success small victories and then obviously do not force immediate change you know go slow you know uh, if you're the type of uh, person who wants immediate change it's this is not going to work with patients like that so again do not be judgmental don't say negative and sarcastic comments this one here this lecture here this training here especially for family members because a lot of family members are like this we are so judgmental you know we are just you know uh negative and sarcastic with the with our comments with our loved ones and uh you know it's a disease you know you don't tell uh, like what i said earlier you don't tell a patient who has a cancer uh, telling oh you're just pretending you're you're weak today and uh, just stand up and walk no same thing with hoarding it's a disease it's a it's a problem in their brain that's being affected so you know uh we got to be really careful on, on top of it and again you know we like to cover mirrors to, to prevent them from having delusion or hallucination and uh next is also minimize the hiding place by locking them you know lock the that extra unnecessary door or unnecessary room or lock the the drawer or dresser that they normally put all this stuff to prevent them from uh, putting more stuff in there and you know just you just got to make sure that the drawer or dresser is properly uh, uh attached to the wall or whatever because if they if it's locked and they keep on pushing and pulling it might drop on them so you know you're going to make sure it's properly you know um secured and of course if you can't lock if you can't uh secure it identify their fi favorite hiding place you, you know in that way if they uh misplace their hearing aid or misplace their dentures you know you, you know where to find it so identify their favorite hiding place and there's always clues you know there's always clues out there obviously keep urinal empty you know why because we've had some patients you know they they uh, think that their urinal is actually also their water jug and they put all the stuff there and they 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 get confused and again last but not least you know you keep it simple keep it simple you know you don't have to be really fancy and organizing uh i don't know if you've seen um uh, that show in netflix uh i totally forgot the title let me let me google it now all right uh uh netflix uh mary condo mary condo show you know when they try to clean up the houses 
Uh, it's called Tidying Up with Mary Kondo in Netflix. So, yeah, you know, you got to check that out. You know, what she does is very simple. You know, it's just very simple. All right. And then uh, collect items that are uh, items when they are not present. You know, it's not because you're trying to trick them, but, you know, just try to organize stuff. And then do a daily environmental rounds. You know, you, if you are in a facility, you know, make sure you check around and their smoke alarms are working and making sure, you know, stuff are really organized in the area. You know, oxygen cords or oxygen tubes, extension cords, you know, and make sure you're checking, you know, uh, rugs that are loose and stuff like that. And then uh, also if they keep on losing their keys or whatever precious items that they have, uh, get a GPS locator if they keep on losing items. I think uh, I used to have one, you know, uh, that I sell online. You got to check that out too online on our website, drmikechua.com. And then, you know, uh, try to redirect them on the on their activities, you know, to provide leisure activities and... Uh, and give them a you know a basket that has the recycled mail and junk jewelries and scarves and bingos and that way that's that's the one that they're going to be trying to uh to hoard with or uh what do you call this uh rummage with and that way that prevents them from you know rummaging other items all right Again, that's the last slide. Oh, wow. That's a quick lecture for tonight. And I appreciate you. Again, always remember the word FAST, F-A-S-T. Let me go back to our uh, first slide. You know, F-A-S-T, you know, first is like our Facebook page. Subscribe our page uh, because the more likes that we get, the better. And the more, uh, tra the more uh, friends that we get, the better. You know, I'm in competition with my wife to get more friends, right? Just kidding. And then letter A, you got to take action on it and, you know, apply and take action. All these free videos that I'm doing, all this uh, training that we're doing every week, every Thursday, it's not going to do me good. It's not going to do you good if you don't take action on it. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Take action and apply it in whatever setting that you're, what you're getting. Okay, and letter S, you know, letter S, share it. Share this page, share it to your family members, share it to your friends and co-workers. That way, you know, they if it, it may not be applicable to you, but it could be applicable to somebody else. So, because sharing is caring. And letter T, you know, you got to learn how to teach it because when you teach it you understand it more so why because when you hear it you forget when you see it you remember but when you actually teach it you understand it more so that's my uh, uh challenge for today again god bless you if you're watching live on this premiere video comment down below live and then if it's a replay obviously comment replay i appreciate you have a great day and uh Thursday Dementia Training, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to our show for today. Again, if you need education, you need CEU courses, log in to medbridgeeducation.com slash TN Therapy Outsource. Use the promo code Dr. Mike or Alternative. Again, thank you very much for watching our show. God bless you. And always remember, movement matters to your brain matter. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.